Well, look, there's a lot of water to flow under the bridge before we get there. Uh, what I want to say now is given what I let off with uh, earlier before I discussed the specific things that the House did last week, the idea that we can't fashion a budget that reflects our priorities given the, the funding that is available because of the condition of our economy right now, which is strong and firing on all cylinders, that would be beyond irresponsible. It's hard for me to fathom uh, that that would happen. Um, and and the, you know, I, I guess it's not impossible, but at the end of the day, uh, we have the ability to make these investments. About two-thirds of the funding involved in the expenditure limit, one-time dollars, which we've never put towards recurring expenditure since I've been governor. So the idea that you would sideline that kind of funding uh, and not go out and do projects to fix people's roads and bridges and to fix the coast, uh, to make technology upgrades, another really compelling one-time uses of, of the money. I mean, that's just beyond me, especially when you have, you know that these projects are not gonna get cheaper over time. Uh, and, and you wanna get ahead of inflation. And if you, if you fund projects, get them under contract, you transfer the risk of inflation away from the state and onto the contractor at that point in time. The, the other thing that, that makes it hard for me to believe that we would park that money is because we have projects that we've already approved, thought we had funded, but the inflation was such when the bids came in, we couldn't execute the contract. So we're going to have to go back and put additional dollars onto uh, those projects just to be able to get them under contract. Um, and the expenditure limit was never intended. And I think, um, I don't remember, I think it was last week, uh, Former Senator Randy Ewing, who actually authored the instrument that, that became uh, the expenditure limit in the Constitution, uh, I think he did a really good job explaining this. It was never intended to prevent a state from spending one-time money on critical infrastructure, for example. Uh, and in fact, it wasn't intended, intended to prevent any expenditures under the current circumstances. Uh, where you have um, uh, such robust growth in the economy and so forth. Back then, you had a state revenue system that was built largely upon oil and gas revenue, and it fluctuated wildly from year to year. Um, that is no longer the case, and we have much more stability in, in our budgeting, especially in the time that I've been governor, when not only do we not use one-time money for recurring expenditures, but we also uh, use realistic numbers when we form the budget. For example, the number of students in our schools, the number of our state inmates in parish prisons and so forth. And then we take the lowest uh, forecast uh, at the REC and adopt it. And that's what we budget to. That's why we've had surpluses in every single year that I've been governor. By the way, 10% of those surpluses have always gone to the unfunded accrued liability. We've made record payments. Uh, to the uh, UAL since I've been governor. So the idea that we wouldn't pass a budget this year and have to have a special session is just under these circumstances. It would be beyond just a self-inflicted wound. I mean, I, I, it, I just can't fathom that that is going to happen. 